Welcome to today's lecture on structural ceramic materials. The emphasis this time is on materials. Having discussed the mechanical properties of ceramic materials, the fraction mechanisms and also various other mechanical property in general. Uh, today we will be discussing or focusing our attention on the materials aspect that is what are the different materials. We have introduced some of the materials earlier, but uh, this particular lecture will be primarily focusing on the materials used for different applications. So, the topic as mentioned is structural ceramic materials. Well, this is uh, what we have already discussed in our earlier uh, lectures on mechanical properties. The uh, summary of that discussion is we have looked into the strength elastic modulus and the fracture toughness. In case of strength, we have also uh, discussed about the flexor strength and comp compressive strength and there are different aspects of strength of different materials. Then we have also included elastic modulus and fracture toughness. Here some of the parameters we have discussed uh, under strength is the finer grain size or the dependence on grain size on strength, critical crack length that is uh, uh, particularly for brittle fracture and then higher viable modulus the uh, basically uh, the uh, reliability, reliability of the measurement. So, you need uh, because the brittle fracture uh, we need large number of measurements to arrive at a different uh, arrive at a reliable data. In case of elastic modulus, uh, better contact damage resistance requires higher Young's modulus that is why we need uh, the understanding of the Young modu Young's modulus. And then fracture toughness resist it is basically the resistance to crack growth and uh, higher is the resistance, higher is the fracture toughness and there is an always an attempt in ceramic materials to en enhance the fracture toughness because basically uh, intrinsically they have a very low fracture toughness. So, there are many extrinsic measures or extrinsic uh, mechanisms by which one can improve the fracture toughness. So, that can be done only through understanding of the mechanism of fracture. So, there are process zone mechanisms and bridging zone mechanisms that we have already discussed in our earlier lectures. So, having uh, discussed that uh, as I mentioned uh, a couple of minutes back, our focus here is on structural ceramics, the ceramic materials used for different applications uh, where the mechanical properties of different types are of uh, relevance. So, there are uh, three varieties of uh, structural ceramics uh, depending on uh, what is the chemical composi composition or the chemical constituents, the nature of uh, bonding mechanisms, the uh, ionic bonds or the covalent bonds. So, the oxides, the oxides ceramics uh, among which uh, the alumina, zirconia and their derivatives that means, certain composites made of alumina, certain additives uh, used in alumina or zirconia, we will discuss some of them later. So, basically they are alumina and zirconia uh, based oxides uh, that is the matrix, then we can have other phases present there to improve uh, their properties. There is a big group uh, on structural ceramics that is non oxides which uh, do not have any oxygen in them and uh, they are uh, they may be carbides, borides, nitrides, silicides and so on. So, uh, carbides uh, I mean these non oxides uh, play a very very vital role. So, far as the structural ceramics are concerned primarily because they have a covalent character. So, far as the uh, bonding is concerned atomic bonds or ionic bonds are concerned and then uh, they have a higher uh, most of them have higher melting points very hard and so on. 
uh, although uh, the fabrication and the synthesis of these compounds are relatively difficult and uh, they may be little uh, they are not available as such in nature unlike alumina and zirconia, but uh, they are very important from the applications point of view. So, uh, even if they are costly, uh, they have a huge application potentiality. Uh, third group of course, is the composites, it can be either particulate composites or the fiber reinforced composites. Uh, sometimes they are referred to as <coughs> ceramic matrix composites CMCs uh, as compared to uh, MMCs which are basically metal matrix composites. So, here in metal matrix composites also we use uh, ceramics, but ceramics are used as uh, reinforcing agents particulates particularly uh, fine particles of ceramics are used in metal matrix composites, but in ceramic matrix composites the matrix itself is ceramics and you have to add uh, to that the reinforcing agents of a different ceramics uh, or different uh, uh, fibers of different compound uh, different uh, other ceramics. So, these are the three different uh, groups under which the whole structural ceramics materials can be uh, classified and each of these categories have their unique material properties and suitable for specific applications. So, we will look into some of them, it is a very vast subject as such and one can spend uh, several lectures uh, on this particular topic, but the time is short. So, we will try to finish it very briefly uh, within this one hour lecture. General properties uh, by this time it is uh, already well known, uh, the oxide ceramics uh, they are oxidation resistance, thermally stable particularly alumina uh, in particular, zirconia may not have that much of thermal stability, but of course, the melting point is very high, but uh, the phase transformation do take place and uh, so from that point of view that may not be that stable at particularly at higher temperature except the stabilized zirconia which is used for refractory applications. Uh, partially stabilized zirconia has certain limitations of uh, be their use at relatively high temperature. Chemically inert, the oxides are obviously chemically inert, electrically insulating, most of them are electrically insulating, uh, particularly alumina. Zirconia of course, has some um, higher thumb electrical conductivity, but that as you have discussed earlier that is not electronic conductivity that is basically ionic conductivity and they have its own application areas. Uh, but as a structural cer uh, ceramic material uh, electrical properties are not, um, not always that important. Thermal properties are very very important, Jerkundi has a relatively low thermal conductivity and therefore, uh, it has a very important application as structural ceramics particularly as coatings. Uh, low cost uh, particularly for alumina, even though zirconia is relatively costly. Uh, so, for the non oxides are concerned, uh, low oxidation resistance because uh, they are non oxides, either carbides, nitrides, silicides, they have a tendency to get oxidized at a relatively high temperature. But in fortunately for us, uh, in most cases. Uh, particularly silicon carbide for example, molybdenum silicide. Uh, so, in both these cases you have silicon and that uh, gets oxidized and form uh, silicon dioxide and forms a glassy uh, layer uh, which is a protective layer and uh, protects it, protects the basic material from further oxidation. So, although they are prone to oxidation, but if silica is there or silicon is there, it gets oxidized to silica and forms a glassy uh, coating uh, to reduce further oxidation that is an advantage for some of these oxygen be, uh, silicon bearing uh, compounds. Generally high thermal and electrical conductivity uh, for example, both molybdenum silicide and silicon carbide are fairly large uh, have a good conductor conductivity both electrical and uh, thermal. Uh, so, they can be used for uh, heat exchangers kind of applications at high temperature. Energy intensive and expensive manufacturing process 
uh, they are fairly large, uh, fairly high melting um, points and therefore, uh, they need very high sintering temperature and also a controlled atmosphere because oxygen uh, should be should not be allowed to come in contact and therefore, it needs a controlled atmosphere centering. So, therefore, costly. However, overall economics comes from the unique properties. So, they have certain unique properties which are not available in other materials and therefore, uh, you have always some economic advantage even then um, in a uh, they are costly uh, in an absolute sense. Uh, ceramic based composites uh, higher toughness most of the composites are actually designed for increasing the toughness. So, they have a higher toughness particularly higher temperature also and uh, low and high oxidation resistance. Uh, low and high oxidation resistance depending on the specific material sometimes they have a low ox uh, high oxidation uh, rate or sometimes in some other material it may be low. So, depending on the applications one can design or choose the materials appropriately. Uh, variable thermal and electrical conductivity, variable thermal and electrical conductivity and complex manufacturing process and therefore, high cost. So, obviously, for making a uh, ceramic based composites with the right kind of uh, phase distribution, uh, it needs a special techniques and therefore, uh, the cost is high, but that always compensates uh, with the kind of unique properties or the application potentiality of those materials. Manufacturing how normal in general how they are manufactured, uh, the manufacturing of structural ceramics is much more complex demanding and expensive compared to that of the so called traditional ceramics that we have already discussed in other initial or introductory lectures that compared to traditional ceramics where uh, the raw materials are naturally available uh, with certain amount of purification and so on. So, uh, they are little uh, less expensive whereas, when you talk about structural ceramics they are high purity materials many a times synthesized materials the powders or the starting materials starting raw materials needs special attention for uh, synthesis. There are different techniques for synth synthesis depending on what kind of chemical compound it is and uh, therefore, uh, they are uh, demanding and expensive compared to the so called traditional ceramics. High purity raw materials as just mentioned uh, and precise methods of production need to be employed in order to ensure development of the desired properties. So, they are more uh, challenging uh, for any ceramic technologies to prepare them and obtain the right kind of properties by controlling the chemical purity, the manufacturing process and also the environment. Well, these are some of the important areas of applications and the corresponding materials normally used for such applications. Uh, uh, for example, on the left we have uh, the list of different uh, um, application areas they have been uh, subdivided in two or three different classes for example, wear parts where friction is very very important and as we know uh, ceramics are hard materials and uh, therefore, the uh, they have a wear resistance property, uh, but together with that you have uh, frictional the coefficient of friction is also important and therefore, uh, for the wear parts not only you need high hardness, but low frictional resistance and moderate strength. The strength uh, is also important, but is not that important compared to the hardness and uh, the low frictional resistance. Uh, the specific components are like pump seals extensively used as pump seals particularly for um, to, uh, to, to avoid leakage of the liquid uh, through the uh, shaft or near the shaft. So, the pump seals uh, 
uh, are, is a very important application and is a from the point of view of market share is a huge market share. Bearings more or less the similar applications, uh, ceramic bearings even ceramic balls total ball bearings are being manufactured these days and nozzles, nozzles for different applications. Uh, it can be for um, abrasive uh, to supply abrasives or to deliver abrasives, abrasive particles or sometimes uh, at high temperature uh, even welding nozzles, uh, uh, ceramic nozzles are also used where it is supposed to be resistance to high temperature and also to the high velocity of the gas. So, these are some of the wear parts where high to high harness, low fractional, frictional resistance and moderate strength and sometimes of course, the high temperature resistance are very important. And the two most important materials used for this kind of purpose is alumina which is relatively uh, less costly and then silicon carbide. Silicon carbide also gets used for uh, all these applications. In fact, palm seals uh, started with alumina, but uh, these days it is mostly used in silicon carbide with silicon carbide. Uh, cutting tools is another very important area of applications of structural ceramics because uh, you need uh, uh, high speed cutting in many many different uh, advanced uh, manufacturing uh, uh, workshops. So, you need uh, properties like uh, high strength, hot hardness is very important because the tip of the cutting tool when it comes to the uh, metallic uh, jobs now the, the material to be cut uh, there is a high speed the job rotates at a very high speed and the, wherever there is a contact between the tip of the cutting tool and the uh, metallic materials you have a he, huge amount of heat is generated. So, the tip temperature goes up more than 1000 degrees centigrade at times and therefore, uh, you need not only the material has to withstand that high temperature, but also it should not lose its hardness at that temperature. So, that is what we call the hot hardness. So, the hot hardness property of the particular material is very very important and thermal conductivity. Sometimes you need less thermal conductivity, but mostly you need higher thermal conductivity because the heat has to be dissipated out. Okay. So, if the it is a two insulating material then there is a uh, heat dissipation is difficult and we get high temperatures which may reduce the or lower down the property particularly the hot hardness. The materials used for this purpose is uh, uh, once again alumina, silicon nitride, cyalon, cyalon is basically silicon aluminum oxynitride. So, it is a a combination of silicon uh, nitride, aluminum and aluminum oxide. So, it is a kind of composite, it is a little complex structure, but silon is a very very important material for uh, cutting tools in particular. Zirconia toughened alumina, not only pure alumina or high purity alumina, but uh, zirconia as you know addition of zirconia um, introduces uh, toughening. Uh, by or traf transformation toughening from the monoclinic tetragonal transformation and alumina uh, titanium carbide. So, alumina is relatively insulating whereas, titanium carbide is uh, uh, more uh, conducting and a composite of alumina and titanium carbide particulate composite uh, is a very useful material so far as the cutting tool is concerned. Most of these cutting tools in fact are coated with some kind of carbides and nitrides for example, titanium nitride and uh, that uh, provides a better performance. Uh, not only the because the bulk of the material uh, not only is important, but the surface is uh, another criteria which determines the performance of the tool. So, many a times uh, different kind of ceramic uh, coatings are added to these cutting tools. Engine components, 
You see, one of the major areas of structural ceramics is in the different kind of engines, either the automotive engines or or uh, the aero engines, the turbines, okay, gas turbines, and so on, turbochargers, and so on. So all these uh, applications requires not only very high temperature, the material must withstand high temperature. So higher is the temperature of operation of the engine, the higher is the efficiency. The fuel efficiency is better, and uh, fuel consumption gets reduced. So there is always a tendency for the all these engines whether it is automotive engines or uh, gas turbines or aero engines, all of them. Uh, in all these cases, we have a, a, a desire to increase the temperature of operation and for that we need right kind of materials uh, beyond the um, service temperature of most of the metals and alloys. So, ceramics plays a very, very important role there and not only the overall engine block, engine block of course is very difficult to make out of ceramics, but there can be many different other components where ceramics plays a very important role. So, the turbine rotors and stators, valves, cylinder linings, all these uh, can be made out of, uh, out of different ceramic materials. The properties which are of importance here are high temperature strength and toughness and thermal insulation. So, most cases thermal insulation sometimes you need thermal conduction also uh, depending on the particular purpose or the function of that particular component. So, high temperature strength and toughness are the prime requirement and then in addition to that thermal properties are also important. And the materials uh, which are of importance in this case uh, is zirconia, silicon nitride, silicon carbide. These are the basic materials, but then they have many different variations, uh, either composites or uh, toughening additives, or toughen, um, additives to toughen the material, or uh, to enhance the other properties. So, zirconia, uh, silicon nitride, and silicon carbide, all these three are the basic materials which are used for this purpose. Well, we have discussed earlier some of the uh, typical properties of uh, structural ceramic materials while we are discussing uh, the mechanical properties, but just to recapitulate this is a separate list. The values may not exactly come match with what we have presented earlier, uh, but just because we are discussing the different materials here, let us have a look at what the uh, key properties. Uh, of these uh, ceramic materials. Uh, Sinter silicon carbide, uh, it is uh, the fracture toughness is about 3 to 3.5 and critical flaw size we have discussed about the when we discuss about the uh, you know, fracture mechanism, fracture mechanism we have introduced the, uh, the uh, concept of critical flaw size. So, that is the critical flaw size about 20 to 25 micron which will grow. If uh, the flaw size is less than that, that is uh, not going to grow under the application of the, uh, of the mechanical stress. So, critical size and idea of the critical flaw size is very, very important for all these materials. Of course, that just a, a, a order of magnitude values, uh, they may not be exact. Okay and they vary, they vary a very wide range depending on what kind of microstructure it has, what kind of grain size it has, what processing uh, history it has and of course, the chemical composition of the, uh, of the material. And the way it has been prepared, for example, uh, you can see here uh, sintered silicon nitride and hot pressed silicon nitride. Sintered means it is a uh, pressureless sintering under normal atmospheric pressure, whereas when you talk about hot pressed, uh, this, this situation is slightly different. Although, in this case, uh, you can see the properties are more or less comparable. Even silon has more or less a comparable properties. So, the, uh, but in others 
context you will find that uh, the processing history or the technique of processing do have a effect um, or influence on the ultimate properties. Uh, these are the th last three is actually composites uh, alumina titanium carbide composite, silicon carbide titanium diboride composite and silicon nitride titanium carbide composite. So, these are all particulate composites. So, the particulates uh, the dispersion is that of titanium carbide, titanium diboride and titanium uh, carbide again and different matrix one is the oxide matrix like alumina carbide matrix and nitride matrix. Once again the fracture toughness is more or less of the same order and uh, the critical flaw size is again uh, very similar to the earlier values except silicon carbide. Okay. So, these are just an order of magnitude just to give an idea that these are the kind of materials having different properties which are being used extensively in industry or in different high tech uh, purposes. This is a continuation of the same table. Uh, here is again a different kind of few groups uh, of uh, materials. The first group is uh, transformation toughened. Earlier we have just uh, the bulk materials or the virgin material kind of virgin materials except this is a particulate dispersed composite. Here we have another toughening mechanism is uh, transformation toughening. Well, one of the uh, very exciting material in this area is zirconia, zirconia uh, with MgO. Uh, so, it is partially uh, stabilized zirconia with MgO and partially stabilized zirconia with yttria oxide, the two partially stabilized uh, zirconia matrix composites or matrix uh, material having uh, the fracture toughness, the enhanced fracture toughness of 9 to 12 and 5 to 8 and then the critical flaw size is of course, increased because uh, fracture is difficult in this case. The fracture has been or uh, the crack um, and does not propagate so easily. So, the critical size has enhanced. If you have a whisker dispersion uh, alumina silicon carbide for example, silicon carbide whiskers are uh, uh, are made are available in industry of course, whiskers uh, the handling of whiskers is difficult or it is not that uh, advisable, but even then alumina silicon carbide composite with silicon carbide whiskers has a fairly large uh, fracture toughness and the critical flaw size is also large. Uh, obviously, uh, higher is the fracture toughness higher is the uh, critical flaw size normally. Uh, fiber reinforced normal is a continuous or a chopped fiber silicon carbide in borosilicate glass. Well, normally borosilicate glass cannot be used as a uh, high temperature um, material. Uh, of course, as such the uh, borosilicate glass has a relatively high softening point compared to soda lime silica glass. Uh, but in some cases silicon carbide enhances uh, the fracture toughness to 15 to 25 you can see uh, these are some kind of although uh, they cannot be used at a very high temperature, but for relatively low temperature they have a very good fracture toughness. Uh, similarly, silicon carbide in lithium alumino silicate which is basically a glass ceramics uh, lithium alumino silicate is one of the highest melting. Uh, glasses and uh, it is basically a glass ceramic uh, composition and in which. So, as such it is a better thermal uh, sorry better uh, mechanical property, but in addition if you reinforce it silicon carbide uh, the fracture toughness enhances quite extensively. Uh, then you have uh, silicon carbide in CVD silicon carbide. So, it is uh, silicon carbide uh, fibers grown by the chemical vapor diffusion technique within CVG. So, it is a, a within silicon carbide. So, it is a silicon carbide silicon carbide composite and uh, that is again a fairly high uh, very high temperature material uh, because silicon carbide is uh, involved 
uh, both in matrix and uh, um, uh, reinforcing agent and uh, the fracture toughness is also enhanced. So, this is one of the costliest material one can have uh, in uh, for high temperature uh, structural application. Ceramic coatings, those who have already discussed they are all uh, basically used in the monolithic or the not the monolithic in the bulk form, uh, but ceramics many of the ceramics are used extensively as ceramic coatings because ceramics being brittle uh, bulk material always have some limitations, but ceramic coatings can always be applied on a metals analyze different kind of metals analyze uh, having the uh, having a much greater uh, fracture toughness. So, uh, in order to take advantage of the high hardness abrasion resistance and better thermal insulation of ceramics together with better toughness of metals ceramics materials are often used as surface coating on metalling components. So, that is a very important area it is a some kind of a composite layer composite one can say, um, but it basically a coated materials. Okay. So, you can ad take advantage of the high abrasion resistance and uh, thermal insulation of ceramic materials together with the good toughness and the elastic modulus uh, of uh, metals or the tensile properties in some cases. So, the coating, uh, coating the different materials uh, ceramic materials which are normally used uh, for coating purpose is titanium carbide, titanium nitride, alumina on uh, tungsten carbide cutting tools for example, I mentioned earlier that uh, not only uh, ceramic cutting tools, but the conventional tung uh, tungsten carbide cutting tools are also coated with ceramics. So, that is another way of enhancing the property of the cutting tools. So, the bulk is tungsten carbide which is a much better uh, fracture toughness and on top of that you coat the tungsten carbide particularly the tip with uh, much harder materials or conducting materials like titanium carbide, titanium nitride and alumina in some cases and uh, such coatings can also be used on more conventional high speed steels not only carbide tip tools. Uh, tip tools, but uh, high speed uh, steel cutting tools, which improves their life by a factor of 2 to, two, two to 5. Okay. So, 2 to 5 times of uh, life uh, enhancement is possible by just applying a good coating, a adherent as well as a sound coating on the cutting tools. Zirconia coating is extensively used. Uh, used uh, there is a mistake uh, used as yeah, zirconia uh, coatings are extensively used as thermal barrier for many different engine components including the gas turbine blades of aero engines to improve the fuel efficiency of the engines. As I mentioned earlier uh, there is a always a desire to operate the gas turbines at higher and higher temperatures. So, the metallic turbine blades have their own limitations. So, the performance of those metallic uh, um, blades can be further improved by using a coating of zirconia. Zirconia has a relatively low thermal uh, conductivity. So, it protects it protects from the high temperature. So, and that is called thermal barrier coating. So, use a thermal barrier to protect the surfaces of uh, the turbine blades and that is a very important and very exotic application of uh, structural ceramics particularly zirconia. Ceramic coatings are also used on a large variety of wear parts. So, all wear parts uh, which we mentioned earlier either it can be a, a bulk material uh, or uh, metals can be coated with ceramics and you get uh, the advantage of the ceramics because it is the surface property which is more important in most of these uh, wear parts. 
The processes used for ceramic coatings, uh, there are many different processes which can be used uh, for uh, making these coatings. Uh, one of the most common is RF plasma spraying, radio frequency plasma, uh, sometimes either in uh, air or in vacuum. Flame spraying, that means uh, depending on the melting point of the oxide or the compound, uh, you can just directly thermal spraying, uh, not the plasma spraying as such, just the thermal spraying is also possible. Uh, CVD chemical vapor deposition is another very important uh, technology uh, te technique by which uh, sound and good coatings can be applied on metallic parts. Spray pyrolysis once again is a relatively low temperature process uh, where some of the um, soluble salts can be in situ pyrolyzed to form the uh, oxides or the mixture of oxides and deposit it on the substrates. So, spray pyrolysis is another technique. Electrophoretic deposition, it is some little different from electro um, lysis or electroplating. Uh, in electroplating, normally you uh, ionize or uh, in uh, the materials to be used is in the ion form or in the soluble form in a particular solvent, uh, whereas in an electrophoretic, uh, it is not in solution, only the dispersion of very fine particles which are not, uh, not dissolved in the, part, in, in the solution, but it just gets um, dispersed, very fine dispersion. Uh, of course, you have to maintain the pH and uh, uh, the, um, the suspense and characteristics by deflocculants and so on and then apply. So, once the particles are dispersed in uh, a particular solvent, they have some surface charges and that surface charges can be used to uh, move these particles by applying an external electric field and it gets deposited on the substrate which is also uh, charged or uh, it forms another electrode, one of the electrodes in the system. So, uh, a a, a non-soluble or insoluble uh, fine particles can be deposited uh, on a conducting uh, conducting surface. So that's called uh, electrophoretic deposition, and ceramics uh, being difficult to dissolve in any material. Uh, this is one of the techniques uh, which has been used for uh, for coating of ceramic materials, particularly oxides. Not so much on carbides or nitrides. Anodization is another technique which is used in metallurgy quite extensively, but ultimately you get in anodization as you know you get a oxide coating on a metal. So, uh, it is an in situ oxidation of a metal. So, you when the oxide forms you can call it a uh, ceramic coating on a metal surface. So, particularly aluminum anodization is very common. Uh, the titanium also can be anodized and one can form a titanium dioxide coating on titanium. So, these are different uh, techniques by which ceramics can be coated on a metal parts. These are commonly used uh, processing techniques for structural ceramics, those are coatings, but otherwise if you want to make a bulk material, uh, we have talked about the materials as such, but this is where we are talking about the different techniques by which these materials are prepared. Uh, well, all ceramics as you know can be prepared by slip casting, particularly the oxides. And then uh, there are, have been classified in uh, two or three different steps of formation. Uh, I think uh, the next one is also there now. Uh, so, these are uh, green forming and densification. So, uh, at room temperature you use these processing techniques like slip casting, dry pressing which are quite conventional and extrusion injection molding. So, these are uh, you know particularly non oxides where slip casting is not possible, but dry pressing is possible for all uh, powders. Then extrusion and injection molding 
are two uh, important uh, techniques by which uh, the processing or the fabrication can take place uh, depending on what kind of uh, shapes and sizes we are looking for. Uh, for example, for sip casting combustors and stators uh, can be used, uh, can be uh, fabricated. Dry pressing cutting tools are mostly uh, dry pressed. Tubing and honeycombs are normally uh, done by extrusion and turbochargers, so complicated shapes, most of the complicated shapes like turbochargers, uh, rotors. Uh, for the gas turbines or tyre charging automotives, automotive engines, uh, they are primarily made by injection moulding. Injection moulding, of course, uh, you know, you need a um, flowable material, a viscous flowable material, and a lot of polymers are actually mixed up, uh, mixed with the um, ceramic particle, ceramic particulates, and then one can uh, very easily slip cast uh, sorry injection mold uh, molding can be done as in case of plastics okay but significant amount of plastics has to be used for this purpose and uh, that has to be burnt out at a later stage and that's a very critical uh, stage uh, for burning out the uh, binders because the quantity of the binder is quite large in this case uh, densification uh, pressureless sintering that's very common and uh, alumina is one of the materials which can be done quite easily and the sintering process of alumina and the additives uh, are quite well understood and standardized. Uh, there can be gas pressure sintering uh, for some of the, uh, it is not hot pressing as such or a hot isostatic pressing, it is a slightly lower pressure and um, in a different chamber. Uh, so, that some of these uh, oxynitrides or nitrides can be uh, sintered by this kind of gas pressure, uh, normally argon pressure uh, up to 100 bars or so, uh, at a, of course, at a high temperature. Uh, aluminum nitride, aluminum oxynitride, silicon aluminum oxynitride, all these things can be done there, but they can also be done by hot isostatic pressing or hot pressure. Uh, reaction bonding, well this is a technique uh, we will discuss little bit in connection with uh, silicon nitride, uh, but silicon carbide reaction bonded silicon carbide is also available or uh, that is also a very standard technique by which silicon carbides can be fabricated. Hot pressing, uh, I am sure all of you know what is hot pressing because uh, you, it is a uni, hot pressing is normally refers to uniaxial hot pressing and uh, then hot isostatic pressing is once again a gas pressure at much higher temperature, much higher pressure. So, all the non-oxides, non-oxide ceramics, silicon nitride, silicon carbide, boron nitride in particular uh, can be um, prepared uh, by both hot pressing and hot isostatic pressing. Now, ceramics uh, matrix nanocomposites, of course, we have mentioned earlier about the composites. Uh, this is a new term on the nanocomposites because uh, uh, this is another variation of the composites, only thing uh, the fineness of the dispersoid, uh, the fineness of the particulates uh, is much finer here, and therefore, they can be classified as uh, nanocomposites. And there are many different nanocomposites have been tried and being used to some extent for different purposes. So, some of the examples of enhanced toughness and strength is the basic uh, driving force for making nanocomposites. So, most of this is second, phase, second uh, phase is in the form of nano dispersion. Uh, there are many different uh, morphologies are available. Uh, it can be intergranular, it can be transgranular. Uh, then there are many ways this dispersion can be controlled or designed to make these nanocomposites. So, some of the important uh, systems are listed here, uh, Al 2 O 3 silicon carbide, so silicon carbide reinforced Al 2 O 3 silicon carbide reinforced silicon nitride, 
silicon carbide reinforced magnesium oxide, even mulite. Mulite um, is a good high temperature material and once uh, and relatively low cost. Uh, once it is reinforced with silicon carbide, it has a quite improved properties at high temperature. Uh, zirconia, zirconia dispersion or nano zirconia can be used particularly if we are talking about uh, zirconia toughened alumina. Basically, there it is a nano dispersion of zirconia phase. Uh, silicon carbide dispersed um, cyalon, cyalon is the matrix phase and once again nano size silicon carbide can be used for the reinforcement of cyalon to enhance once again the enhanced property both high temperature property and the toughness. Uh, titanium diboride reinforced bor boron carbide that is another uh, material um, nano composite which has been tried for different purposes. Uh, titanium nitride reinforced titanium diboride. So, many different composite combinations can be tried and uh, have been used and developed for different purposes. So, some of the uh, some of them may be oxide, some of them the matrix itself may be non oxide. Okay. Now, there are we have talked about a large number of different uh, nitrides and oxynitrides, carbides and so on. Uh, it is difficult uh, within this short time frame to discuss in details uh, what are the structures, what are their uh, uh, preparation techniques, uh, one can go as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is a very vast subject and expanding subject and uh, one can discuss a lot about that. So, without going through all that, I have just picked up one particular compound, the silicon nitride which has been one of the earliest developed non-oxide ceramics. Uh, I will try to give some details about this silicon nitride, but similar uh, discussion can also be taken uh, for other uh, non-oxide ceramics as well. So, silicon nitride ceramics was first developed during 1950s as a thermocouple tube and crucible for melting some metals and also as rocket nozzles. Okay. So, uh, this is a very high temperature material and one of the main one of the main properties not only as a fracture toughness is relatively high, but also it has a non weighting characteristics, non weighting characteristics to different metal uh, molten metals and therefore, silicon nitride crucibles uh, have been used uh, for melting uh, some of the small metal uh, small quantities of metals where you do not lose the metal or the metal is not getting contaminated with the container material. So, that was the first time in 50s it was used for the purpose. It was formed one of the interesting property of our uh, criteria for making uh, silicon nitride is uh, it was formed by nitriding compacted shapes of silicon powder at 1150 to 1400 degree centigrade. Uh, it is one of the very easiest way of making a silicon carbide silicon nitride shapes. Take the silicon nitride silicon metallic silicon powders and uh, press it or give it a shape just like any other silicon, uh, any other ceramic powder and then uh, nitride it or uh, uh, heat it at a high temperature of 11, 1150 to 1400 degree centigrade in a nitrogen atmosphere when silicon powder gets converted to silicon nitride and also gets sinter. So, this kind of silicon nitride was later termed as reaction bonded silicon nitride. So, it is automatically uh, during the reaction of between silicon and nitrogen. Uh, the bonding also, also takes place. So, it is a uh, it is a reaction bonded or reaction sintered you can say. So, uh, this particular terminology has been used quite extensively in uh, structural ceramics particularly both for silicon car silicon nitride and silicon carbide. Okay. So, silicon can be a starting material and then it can be uh, it can be melted in presence of carbon so that silicon carbide forms and gets sintered. So, that is also uh, silicon carbide or reaction bonded silicon carbide. So, RBSN and RBSC. Uh, one of the most important advantages of this material is that there is 
uh, disadvantages uh, oh sorry uh, this is uh, the advantage in fact one of the most important advantages of this material is that there was hardly any shrinkage during heat treatment during this reaction there is hardly any shrinkage the volume change from silicon to silicon nitride is very negligible and therefore you don't have any shrinkage whatever so it's uh, it's a net shaped formation net shaped form forming is possible by this technique major disadvantages however uh, for the rbsn or reaction bonded silicon nitride is relatively low mechanical strength because of the high uh, amount of micro porosity so about 20 to 30% micro porosity and therefore the strength is relatively low so that was one of the major disadvantages densification is difficult due to poor self diffusivity of silicon so silicon in silicon nitride actually the diffusion coefficient is very low so the sintering is relatively uh, difficult and therefore the micro porosity the alternate techniques to prepare more dense material could be developed during 1960s later on through addition of different sintering aids and also by hot pressing so later on uh, a lot of research has uh, gone in and uh, densification could be enhanced by uh, addition of different additives and also by hot pressing magnesium oxide became one of the useful sintering aids okay our full densification could be obtained with magnesium oxide addition together with hot pressing about 1850 degree centigrade okay so that is hot pressed silicon nitride so that is the uh, terminology used uh, for a different group of silicon nitride prepared by hot pressing and together with addition of magnesium oxide as the additive so that's much more dense full densification almost 100% densification could be possible by that technique since then uh, liquid phase sintering has been more uh, prevalent and several other additives like yttrium oxide yttrium oxide together with aluminum oxide and a few rare earth oxide has been uh, most regularly used uh, for fabrication of silicon nitride based products so today's silicon nitride products are mostly used by uh, liquid phase sinter with additives like yttrium oxide yttrium oxide and aluminum oxide and some of the rare earth uh, also are used and during liquid phase sintering this is the kind of uh, reaction which takes place silicon nitride plus sio2 and this is the oxide which is added then it goes to silicon nitride and a phase like this which is a kind of silicon phase uh, metal metal is the oxide either yttrium or aluminum or yttrium aluminum uh, so uh, al2o3 plus y2o3 uh, this kind of additive gives a liquid phase central material a very nicely uh, microstructure elongated rods like beta silicon carbide silicon nitride is surrounded by uh, yttrium silicon aluminum oxygen glassy phase so that's a liquid phase which forms and has a lower melting point and uh, it's a nice crystal uh, microstructures is obtained mostly is beta beta silicon nitride carbide there is an alpha variety also i'll give you some of the difference between alpha and beta in a minute so this is a typical microstructure of uh, beta silicon nitride so these are the black phases where surrounded by glasses white phases uh, and, and because of this elongated structure it has a very nice a very high strength and fracture toughness okay uh, I'll just give you a brief idea about the structure of silicon nitride and the different polymorphic forms. Silicon nitride exists in two different polymorphic forms, alpha and beta. Beta beta is most more common and mostly used, but there is an alpha variety also. The structure of the beta form is based on phenacite type uh, compound that is beryllium silicon oxygen. Okay, this is the kind of silicate beryllium silicon oxygen uh, silicate in which uh, the oxygen ions are replaced by nitrogen oxygen is replaced by nitrogen and beryllium uh, beryllium um, uh, by silicon so uh, that's how the there are two varieties of silicon here one was this and another is that okay so the structure looks like uh, this um, these are the this is the beta variety and this is the alpha variety so 
uh, I do not have much time to go through details of that. So, this is basically a puckered rings of silicon and oxygen and there are layers, there are layers of silicon. Uh, this is uh, uh, your uh, uh, A layer, A layer you have a uh, this kind of layer and B layer is again uh, this is nitrogen and this is silicon. Uh, these kind of open circles are not shown here, but they are the different levels. Uh, so, this is one uh, level where nitrogen and silicon are there, again the nitrogen and silicon there is a B layer uh, at a different level. Uh, so, uh, it can also be uh, like this A, B, C, D, there are different uh, in fact it is a stacking of different layers of what we have, we have seen. So, in case of the basic difference between alpha and beta, one can see the stacking. Uh, beta layer, beta has a A B A B stacking, whereas alpha has a A B C D stacking. Okay. So, these are the different um, notations used. Uh, so, these are uh, the triangles are actually nitrogen and the circles are silicon and they are at different levels. Okay. So, that is what is the difference between alpha and beta and out of that beta is more stable and this is the structure, this is the material which we normally use. Okay. Uh, last topic, I will just take a couple of minutes very briefly. The function of ceramic armor, uh, there is one of the applications which is coming up in a very large way is the armor application of ceramics. Okay. The function of a ceramic armor is to enhance uh, personal or vehicular protection by defeating the projectiles. When you uh, strike a bullet or some cells by absorbing the energy of the projectile and they process fragment into pieces. Okay. The purpose is to prevent target perforation uh, and structural failure with or without penetration. Basically these armors, the purpose of these armors is to save the human beings or the vehicles in the battlefield. Okay. So, the armor must absorb the ballistic impulse without failure. The primary role of the ceramic armor is to convert the kinetic energy of this to the stored elastic energy. So, higher is the toughness, higher is the hardness. If the hardness is high, the bullet gets blunted and if the toughness is high, the bullet, the energy of the kinetic energy of the bullet actually gets adsorbed in the form of an elastic energy and that is how the, the force or the velocity gets lost. So, that is how you protect. Uh, the human beings as well as the vehicles uh, in the battlefield. So, that is one of the applications which are strategic applications which are coming up in a very, very big way uh, in recent uh, the last uh, decades or so. So, the materials used alumina of different purity up to 99.5 percent, sintered silicon carbide, then reaction bonded silicon carbide and boron carbide, okay, hot pressed materials like silicon carbide, boron carbide, titanium diboride and tungsten carbide. And at R and D stage there is another material which is used for this purpose is aluminum nitride. Okay. And I have given you some, this is the variation of energy dissipation factor as a function of different uh, properties and you will see hot pressed boron carbide is one of the preferred materials for all these, but there are many others. Alumi, uh, hot pressed aluminum nitride, that silicon nitride, Al2O3, hot pressed silicon carbide and all of them with different properties ZTA, but this is always in the top. Okay. So, here it has been plotted the fracture toughness. So, higher is the fracture toughness, uh, the better uh, is the uh, dissipation factor, energy dissipation factor, but in all these cases even if you have a low fracture toughness here it is a combination of fracture toughness and hardness and then hot press boron nitride always at the highest dissipation factor. Here again is the hardness, again at a higher hardness you have a higher dissipation factor and so on. So, these are different materials, uh, I do not have much time to discuss all them, you can always look at it. But uh, the transparent armor on the very recent uh, development is in the area of transparent magnesium aluminate spinel ceramics, it is under development and uh, all these 
all, all your uh, materials are basically opaque materials, but sometimes you need transparent ceramics which can also protect the human beings in particular or you have the windows of different uh, battlefield uh, vehicles. So, there you need transparency as well as the armor property, the energy dissipation property. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this uh, lecture on structural ceramics and also uh, the end of the mechanical behavior of the materials. The only one left uh, we will take it up in the next class that is uh, on bioceramics. So, I will spend about an hour discussing about the bioceramic or bio, uh, the materials, ceramic materials used in biotechnology. So, with this we come to the end of this class and thank you for your attention.